Can you hear me? <laughs> okay, I will just uh, go to grab some water and I'll be right back in one minute.
So hello everyone, can you hear me? Oh, cool, yes. Let's give me uh, just one more minute to wait for people uh, finish to join and then we will start, okay? Okay, let's start. So, hello everyone. My name is Osvaldo Dybert. I'm working uh, <clears throat> in Microsoft, I'm, uh, reporting to Microsoft uh, headquarters in uh, Redmond. Um, working very close to the API management engineering team, and uh, I did some tools to API management, some features I implemented to API management. So, one of our uh, job. Um, as my role, uh, we call this a global black belt for cloud native solution, is create some samples to be reusable to people use to train and sell or train other people. So basically today, I would like to uh, show you, oh, before uh, I start, uh, one quick question. Uh, can you see my screen okay? Because my resolution, I don't know if it's, uh, it's too small for you or... It's okay? Okay. So today, my uh, the main idea here is to show you about this uh, workshop we created uh, a few months ago, like in August of, uh, or September. And then this basically, the main idea here is to show uh, how to use uh, API management or Azure API management uh, with uh, serverless content or serverless, uh, um, serverless services. So in this uh, workshop, basically what we're going to see, it's uh, this architecture here. So what we are implementing basically is uh, we have the Azure API management here. So then we have two different uh, Azure functions. And then we will import these and expose these uh, as a, a APIs in uh, operations. And then we will apply some policies and check the application insights to see the telemetry about the number of requests uh, or other uh, telemetry. So basically this uh, repo, I will paste it uh, to you right now. Okay, so basically this is a free and an open source uh, workshop. Anyone can uh, use it. So the main idea here is uh, we have uh, a simple setup uh, using this serverless API uh, setup.sx, SH. So then we have some uh, six different, uh, not challenges, but uh, six different uh, um, exercise, let's call this as an exercise. Uh, in general, uh, when I build some uh, workshop or things like that, I don't like too much to, you know, do a, like a hands-on. So basically this is not kind of a hands-on lab, but uh, you need to, you know, figure out some uh, ways to solve some problems using this uh, this documentation. So uh, here uh, we talk about a little bit uh, on the um, API management architecture with for this uh, solution, and then we talk a little bit what are serverless API. So then you can see what are the uh, main portfolio for uh, Microsoft on Azure <coughs> serverless uh, side with a solution architectures, uh, diagram and references and etc. So then uh, for this repo, so then uh, we have that uh, those six. Um, six exercises and then we were going to cover you know the uh, setting up the azure environment so then exposing the azure functions as uh, api in, in api management then 
packing APIs with products. So then I will explain a little bit about the products and show how to, to do this. So then after uh, we will have the, this option to apply the API runtime policies, uh, we will implement the uh, rate limit for the API management uh, APIs deployed there. So then uh, we're going to see the telemetry using application sites and then the versioning API. Uh, we keep uh, doing some uh, improvements on these uh, on this challenge. Uh, after I will show another uh, tool I built like a two, yeah, two, two and a half years ago to implement a DevOps side on the uh, API management for API management. So. This is the first uh, um, uh, this the first uh, uh, view here. So this is our README. So then, uh, for each exercise uh, we will have, for the six exercises we have, so then we we will have a, a reference. So there are some related resources. So then, explaining all the no uh, like uh, uh, what is azure functions api management how to use azure serverless overview serverless api model on microsoft learn is a really good uh content if you are not uh you're not familiar with the um api uh api management in uh azure uh functions so basically i did this like a I don't know, like a, a year ago. So, and all the uh, feedback are uh, very welcome. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh my gosh. No, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Can you see my screen now? Sorry, it was my bad. Yeah. Okay. And the uh, uh, and the screen is okay, right? Like the the size you can see. Okay, sorry, sorry. Let me go back to <laughs> go back here. So then, uh, let me put this uh, side here. One second. Put this aside here, so then it will be easier to see you guys. Okay, sorry for that. So, too many screens? Too small? Okay, so let me change something here. Reduce the resolution. No, probably. Let me do something different here. Okay. Probably is better, right? Let me show you. It's better now? Okay, thank you. Sorry. So, no. Okay. Oh, sorry for, about that. So, let me uh, recap here. So, then um, I was showing <clears throat> in the beginning uh, the main objective on this uh, presentation is to uh, show the workshop I create with some colleagues from the API management uh, product team. So, my name is Osvaldo Dibert. I'm working on the Global Black Belt uh, Cloud Native team. So then we work very close to the uh, product team. So we do some like uh, examples, workshops, and etc. So basically today I would like to show you uh, this workshop serverless APIs in Azure. So then this is a, an open source uh, workshop. So all the content uh, you can go uh, open an issue with some feedbacks, with bugs, and, and etc. And basically the main idea uh, today is to show you how to create uh, infrastructure like that. So we will have uh, two different Azure functions. 
so one for product and one for uh, reviews. Uh, those uh, Azure functions are based on a, a serverless model on Azure. So all those uh, functions will be exposed to API management. And then from API management, uh, clients, web clients, mobile app, apps and services could be uh, access our uh, API management and connect uh, via API gateway to the uh, functions behind. And then we can apply some uh, policies like rate limits and uh, authentication, authorization, and things like that. And then we, we implement and connect to Azure application sites. And then we can uh, have the telemetry on this um, on these uh, on this architecture, right? So basically, this workshop then you can run by yourself, or if you are a, a Microsoft partner, for example, then you can uh, train your uh, customers, or if you are an internal uh, team, you can train them using this uh, content because all these content are open source, and then there is very uh, very um, explain it. So I don't like to do like a hands-on labs, you know, like the hey. Click here, click it here, click there, do this, do that. But basically, the main uh, idea here is to understand and uh, how API and API uh, gateway uh, could be used in uh, serverless architecture. So then ex uh, expose serverless APIs, then uh, protect, accelerate, and uh, create runtime policies, uh, and then uh, observability on the API management traffic, and then identify problems, and etc. So, and, and, and version and uh, revision as well. So basically, uh, here we have these, uh, what are our serverless APIs? As a quick explanation, we have a link to uh, our uh, Azure serverless portfolio, so then you can see what we have. So we have a, a serverless Kubernetes, serverless functions, serverless application environment, is an isolated uh, environment uh, you can you can use to connect to an on-premise uh, environment. And then this uh, repo, we have six exercises. So basically, we uh, setting up uh, an Azure environment. It will create for us the resource group, will create for us the uh, two Azure functions, deploy the two Azure functions there, uh, we create uh, application sites, and then it will not create the API management. Because as I mentioned, uh, uh, I don't like to to uh, create the hands-on lab in this scenario, uh, I would like to you to do uh, like a, even 10 minutes research in each uh, exercise to uh, understand better the documentation and even given us feedback about the documentation to see how we can uh, improve it. Okay, so then uh, we have the six uh, different uh, exercises, and in the bottom page of all those exercises, exercises, we have these related resources uh, pointing to some specific uh, references to help you on this uh, the exercise uh, requirements, okay? So then, uh, then we can uh, go and uh, get started. So the first thing we will do here is provisioning uh, Azure resources. So basically, uh, we create uh, this simple, um, uh, shell script here, the serverless <coughs> uh, API um, setup.sh. So then basically what you need to do is clone this repo, uh, login into uh, Azure, and then uh, pass your subscription ID. And based on this, <coughs> it will create for you all these uh, resources. So the serverless uh, sample resource group with a random number in front of it, the serverless uh, sample storage account, and then the application sites, and then the Azure function, uh, function app for products, and then for reviews. And basically, when I uh, we finish this, your uh, resource group or your Azure uh, account, so then you have this. is something similar to this. Okay, when you run it, you have this. So I ran it uh, from my terminal uh, a few minutes ago. <coughs> Basically, <coughs> sorry. When you run it, so then uh, it will show the, uh, uh, the, 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 the user, the IDs, and then I use the, you know, like the uh, my subscription ID, 
And then the output results will go to this uh, serverless API M setup.log. So then it will create the resource group, uh, all those, um, those uh, files. And then I can uh, see if I want to see the serverless API management setup.log. Uh, so all the information is here about the, um, uh, the resources uh, created, like the, okay, I'm creating the resource group. The name is a uh, sample 84, blah, 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 and 44. And then this uh, application uh, insights, and then the uh, Azure functions, the two Azure functions. So it deploys the uh, Azure functions as well, the two, the products and the uh, reviews. So then when I go to my uh, resource group, so then I can see my, um, serverless, my uh, application insights, the two API management, and then uh, the service plan, and then the storage account here, okay? So what I can do now, so for the first example, um, basically you just need to run that, uh, uh, to the first exercise, you just need to run this uh, serverless uh, API M setup dot, uh, SH, SH, and then it will create for you uh, automatically. So then you can run using the cloud, uh, the Linux Azure Cloud Shell, if you are familiar with this one, or for example, if you are running on Windows or running on uh, <clears throat> a Linux, or you want to run on your local machine, so basically you will run with this uh, this command as well. So, okay. So then, as I mentioned, uh, for each uh, exercise, we have this related resource here. So how to install the core tools and dependencies, run the function uh, Azure function locally, publish the project to Azure. So I have here, uh, the example of my uh, API, like the uh, the product uh, function. So then I have like the get products. I will use this a lot uh, today to show you. Basically, it's the just get a, a list of uh, all the products. So then uh, basically, it's a simple uh, Azure function uh, wrote in uh, C sharp. So then I have here some examples how to call and the payloads I need to to use like uh, okay how to get the, uh, all the products so then how can I uh, you know get the or delete the the products or send uh, and update the products <coughs> in general so let's go back to the to the exercise here so then after uh, I create this uh, this thing uh, this first exercise oh first any question let me check if you have a any question on the other window? Where are you? Okay, any question? No, okay. So let's move to uh, uh, the challenge number two or exercise number two. So we will import uh, the uh, Azure functions to uh, API management. So basically what is the main idea here is, so now, as you can see, we have the serverless samples, product and reviews. So the product, uh, it's a simple, um, uh, it's a simple uh, Azure function with some uh, operations here. So some, some uh, um, functions here, sorry. Then, I will deploy this. Uh, this is deployed. So then now I will import this to our uh, API management, but I did not create the API management yet, right? So basically the exercise number two is how, uh, showing how to import the APIs on uh, API management. <clears throat> so then there's a simple explanation. So with some links, so learn about the benefits to use API management in serverless architectures. So then we're going to do the, you know, like the import APIs. So then, uh, there's an uh, official Azure Functions tutorial to explain in details uh, how to uh, import and uh, deploy uh, Azure Functions. So then you can see, let me go back here a little bit. Uh, so we have this serverless API M setup. So as you can see, create this uh, script. So it will create everything for you, but if you want to run or do it by yourself with different script or uh, using a uh, Azure DevOps pipeline or something uh, similar, so then you can uh, use it.
So then from now, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, so I follow the uh, steps here. So then, oh, okay, navigate to your function app on, in Azure portal, select API management. So I will do this uh, uh, real quick here. So then I'm on this, um, this uh, function, the product function. So as you notice, uh, we didn't deploy the API management itself. So then I will choose API management here directly from my uh, serverless uh, product, my Azure Functions product, okay? So then with this uh, option here, I can create or I can see the API management uh, I have or instances I have uh, on my uh, subscription, or in this case, I will create a new one. Then I have uh, all the information here. So then I can uh, use the name or whatever I want to, to configure to my uh, API. So then basically what I'm going to do here uh, on the portal, uh, it's uh, create this um, Paris will be the name of my, uh, no, sorry, APIM. There is my account, my resource group, which location, my organization name, my email. So then I can use to um, to approve uh, some requests. So then I will use the consumption plan. So basically on uh, API management, we have a, a five different uh, SKUs, so the developers. So there's no SLA for uh, it, it's just for uh, development uh, by then itself, and then uh, it uh, have all the features you have on the premium uh, the premium instance. So then we have the base key, the standard, and the premium. The difference is the the premium uh, we can deploy API management in different regions, so we can have a uh, high high availability, resilience, uh, and the SLA is a ninety nine point nine nine percent. So and then we have a consumption plan. Consumption plan is the serverless. Uh, version of uh, API management. So it will, uh, you will pay only uh, as a usage. So like Azure Functions or in AWS, for example, when you are using Lambda, you just pay for the number of requests you have during this uh, some uh, period, okay? So then I enable uh, application sites. I will set the application sites, uh, the, the new one uh, it was created uh, before. So then I click on uh, create here. So then it will create for me uh, the API management instance. So it will take our, around uh, one minute. So then uh, as we can see, it's uh, very uh, well detailed. And then uh, as you can see here is all oh, display name, name description and et cetera. So then there's the specific uh, doc documentation or tutorial then how you can import uh, and publish your first api so we put all the uh information you need to learn in a ramp up or train other uh other people uh using this workshop so then uh, let's go back to the the uh the exercise so then it will be created and then now the next step is to test the api so then i will show you the uh, api management uh portal itself and then we will test all the apis imported there so let's see if it's uh, finished okay i'm still deploying So I can go back to my resource group and I can check. So then I have this APIM uh, Paris here. Let's see, the instance is up and running. Okay, it's ready. The instance is up and running. So then I will go back to the uh, serverless, uh, the product samples, go back to um, APIM. Oh, what? My screen is not refreshing. Okay. So then now uh, for the next step, so we need to uh, import or link 
the Azure functions to my API management. It means my backend. So my backend is the, uh, the, the, the functions we have here. And then uh, I will uh, link uh, the API to API management. As you can see on the, uh, on the workshop again, so then uh, I will import the APIs. So then uh, uh, go to the, uh, oops, actually the last step here, uh, the number uh, uh, five and six to link uh, the API button here. So then when I click here as a, a link API, it will show me from the product API, all the functions or all the operations I have for this specific API with the HTTP uh, methods and the URL and etc. So then I click on uh, select. So it will import for me the uh, API. So then again, let's check the, basically check us, uh, how can we use the like the name. So it's a product API, products, product, and then the base URLs. And then I will use here as a, so this will be pro product. I'm sorry. Explain it. Pro do API. So then it will uh, show this is the logic name, and this is the uh, the internal name or the uh, function app uh, internal name for uh, API management. So then the API uh, URL suffix will be serverless sample products. Then I can change this to just to pro do if I want. So then my URL, my base URL will be APIM Paris Azure uh, API.net with uh, products in front of it, but I can uh, use any uh, URL. So then I can use my custom uh, domain in this case if I want. So then I click on create. Okay, now I have my uh, APIs imported or my APIs my API, my product API imported with all the uh, the uh, operations uh, we have on, on it. So then I can uh, go back here. So then the next step is how I can test my uh, API uh, from my API management to call the Azure function or the product Azure function, okay? So basically the test is uh, quite simple. So there's the explanation here how to, to use it. So there's this official Azure documentation, how to uh, understand how to test using uh, Azure portal. So, but basically what I can do is I can choose like the get products, for example, and then get products if I go to my, um, to my function app, basically it's doing this uh, product, get all products. So then uh, it's returning some uh, products. So I'm not using a, a, a database or whatever because it's, uh, the main idea here is on this workshop, it's keep it simple <clears throat> and make people comfortable to uh, move between the exercises. So then basically uh, this get product operation, so I can test it. So as you can see, I have the guest, guest get products. What are my uh, host name? So here I just have one. Uh, if I'm using Azure, fun, uh, Azure API management uh, premium uh, version, so then it will show me different uh, regions here. So if my, um, like the pro get product by ID, which requires a parameter, so then I can uh, add a parameter. So I can add some headers, uh, headers if I want. So then the, this basically is the, uh, URL, so then I can use this URL to uh, call the API directly from the browser if I want, for example, but I having a 401 because uh, I put a, a security there. So then we will uh, see this uh, in a few moments. So then I can uh, check what is the HTTP request and then I will send the request. Basically it will uh, call uh, with that header and the, uh, all the information. So it will return me like uh, 200, okay. So it means um, this uh, client application, the Azure portal client application calls the API management on that URL, on this URL in this case, uh, this one here. So then after <clears throat> it will uh, 
call it and it will return to you. So then this is the behavior your uh, client application will, uh, will see. So then you can run how many uh, times you want. So then you can try to like uh, any other uh, one, like a product uh, one, let's see, uh, ID is one or two. So then in this case, it's great product by uh, ID. So then I can put here like, uh, okay, I want to see the uh, two, product two. So then it gives me the description and blah, 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 okay. Uh, and then the same for the other ones with different uh, verbs uh, on my um, on my uh, on my call. So then I have a, a trace. It's a simple uh, way to see what was uh, the traffic between uh, the client application and the uh, uh, API management itself. So then all the information is here. Uh, this is very important. We have uh, this subscription key. If you want to call this, use this uh, subscription key name and this value here, then your client will connect to my API management. And then there's some uh, other um, parameters here, and then uh, the information uh, returned and etc. Okay, uh, we see uh, we will see this more in details on the tracing uh, exercise. So basically, uh, then we finished exercise number two. So then. Again, we have the related resources, uh, like the uh, more like learn more about API management, uh, functions, uh, how to import, you know, learn how to import your first API on Open API. So there's a few ways to import. I'm importing this using the uh, the uh, the API management integration or link integration uh, directly from my serverless uh, product, my Azure Function product. But there's another way to to do this. If I'm going to API management, my API I am uh, Paris, so there's a, a different way. So then I can come to the uh, APIs here. So then I can see products. And if I want to add an API, I can add a new blank API, an open API, uh, legacy APIs here, logic apps, app services, or even Azure functions. So then you can do from the um, from the Azure function uh, product itself, or I can go here in function and create as a uh, as the same uh, as the same way so then when i click on in browse so it will show me uh here all the um uh, uh functions i i have on my uh subscription okay so basically it's basically it's the same thing the, the the final result will be uh the same so <clears throat> let's go back uh here so then uh we go to pack the apis with products uh, it's the exercise number three. Basically, products, it's an, uh, a set of APIs in operations. Uh, I can, you know, split it uh, for different client application or for different users. So then I can have, uh, for example, two different versions uh, of my API the same API, like the product API, uh, with different uh, behaviors. For example, I can create one uh, silver product or three tier with just uh, three requests every 15 seconds. So this is the three tier. So then if someone go to the silver tier, so then I can set to have uh, 15 calls every 15, uh, uh, every 15 seconds, uh, no more than this. So then I can have the unlimited uh, version. And then in this case will be unlimited, no policy, but uh, uh, it's in for each one, there will be different uh, different uh, application keys. Uh, keys. So basically what I'm, we are going to do here, it's uh, create the, uh, the product, configure the product and publish the, the product. There's a few ways to do this. Uh, I think uh, we choose a good approach here to understand uh, a little bit better. Uh, in this, um, uh, uh, in this scenario. So then again, the explanation, what is API management product and uh, why use it? So then there's an API management developer portal. This uh, consumption plan doesn't support the API management developer portal, but all other uh, SKUs uh, support the API management uh, uh, portal. So then uh, you can document your APIs, your uh, client uh, developers can go there and see the documentation and uh, everything, okay? So then uh, what are the steps to create the product? Basically, so we go to API management instance. So then we, we choose like the uh, product and then we add an, a new product. So then let's do this here. So then I can uh, go here, product. I will add a new product. So then. There's some uh, suggestion here to uh, to use the name like a 
serverless API. It will be the name of my uh, my product. So it will be serverless Paris. Oops. Paris. Uh, free free cheer, for example. So this is my ID. I can put a description. Uh, publish. It's not necessary because uh, this publish it's to publish, and then the uh, developer portal will uh, read this information when the developer are there and document all the information. So I can uh, subscription uh, count limit. I will do this. Uh, we can do this like uh, manually uh, now, like put like a three per second. Uh, it will be the the full, uh, or then I can uh, do this after. Okay, and then I can add the legal terms, all the information I I'm, I'm testing here. So will be available, and uh, it will document the uh, APIs on uh, API uh, management portal. Okay, so then I will choose the APIs I want to to add to this. Uh, to this product specifically. So then I just have the, you know, the product API. If I have 10 different APIs, I can choose, for example, just two or three. So then I can put uh, products API, reviews APIs. So then I can create the product as a set of APIs not in, in, in operations, right? So then I will click here to create, and then let's see if someone has any question here. Let me go back real quick. This one here. Okay, any questions for now? No, okay. So now uh, in my products, <clears throat> I have this product, the serverless Paris uh, free. So then I can click here and publish if I have uh, the uh, developer portal uh, in different SKU or I can uh, delete it, okay? So, but now let's see uh, what we need to do after. So then I set the, the display name, description, require subscription, select APIs, and then I create, okay? So then I will create the product subscription now. So for the product subscription, uh, the main idea here is uh, we have an application key or app key uh, for the API. So this specific API, when I'm on the, uh, okay, Where the API is here. My screen's having a little delay. Okay, so then um, this product API here, if I go uh, in, and check here uh, some uh, information, so then I can see the subscription, the subscription key. I can, uh, I will have a one subscription key for each uh, API on this, uh, main level or the root level of the uh, APIs. Uh, so then I can, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, so then I can test. And then when I'm testing, so like the get products, so one parameter is used, it's this, uh, okay, the uh, API management subscription key. This is uh, on the API uh, level. So, but when we create the product, so then I can have this on the product level. So it means I can use, for each API, we have a, one different uh, subscription key. So if I have like a product API, reviews API, so then I will have the subscription uh, key for a product API and a different one for a review API, okay? So, but in this case, as I'm, I created a, a, a product, and the product is this uh, serverless Paris uh, free here. So what I can do in this uh, in this case, it's I can uh, create one specific application key uh, for this product. So the client application will have access to all the APIs you add to this serverless, uh, in this case, serverless Paris uh, free uh, product, okay? So then basically when we go back here, so then, uh, we can create this uh, subscription. So the point here is um, uh, API management support JWT token. So it supports uh, support, uh, uh, integration with uh, any OAuth uh, a provider. It supports uh, Azure Active Director or any other uh, kind of uh, 
uh, API, uh, sorry, uh, authenticator uh, product. Okay, so then basically uh, we use basically the uh, uh, the subscription with the app key. But if I want to use a uh, uh, username and password or JWT token, so then I can do this uh, as well. So now I will create a, um, uh, a new subscription here. So then <clears throat> click on subscription. So then I can here I can see the um, the for the products as you can see the built-in access uh, here. So then I can uh, show in uh, hide keys, regenerate primary or secondary key for um, for a, a, a key, rot key rotation. So then I will create a new one specific for this uh, product and set the scope. In this case, it will be uh, APIM uh, APIM Paris. Three, and then the name will be for this subscription as using the same name. Uh, let me remember if he's asking to. Okay, allow tra tracing. To remember this sometimes. So allow tracing, and then uh, what are the scope of this? So it's all APIs, just one specific API or a product. So in this case, for example, if I, I set to all APIs, if someone using this uh, uh, application key. Uh, it will access to, uh, have access to all the APIs. If I want to use just for one API, so then I choose API, and then I choose the APIs I have uh, on my uh, API management uh, in this scenario. So in this case, we would like to uh, create the uh, a key for product. So then it's showing the product. Then I will uh, choose this uh, serverless uh, Paris free, as we can see here. Uh, in, in this case here. So let's show you real quick. So then uh, there's this screen will be, you know, like the API uh, consumer run, two, three. Then you can create like an API, any other API economic uh, uh, scenario, uh, all the um, products uh, you want to, to allow to one specific client application or for one specific user or users or uh, different kind of uh, uh, users. So let me create, save it here. Okay, so then I need I have this uh, API uh, in Paris free uh, tier nah, uh, for the um, for this product, and then this is the end of uh, uh, the uh, exercise number three. So and then here there is a lot of explanation about you know like uh, uh, what are the difference between all the API management uh, tiers as I mentioned before. So then you can see, uh, for example, I'm using the consumption. Uh, uh, cheer. So there's no Active Directory integration, but the developer uh, cheer has all the, the, the features like premium. So then the basic and uh, standard, that's the, the difference uh, for uh, each one. Uh, then uh, we can go and apply policies in revision. So, okay, basically revision uh, is, a, is different from uh, versioning. So I can create different versions of my APIs on API management. So I can use uh, revision. Uh, it's, a, it's a way to, uh, to make changes uh, on our uh, APIs without, you know, uh, uh, broke the contract from my operations for my developers using the uh, current version. So then I can uh, have a different uh, developers uh, testing a different uh, APIs uh, uh, revision. So it will be a little bit uh, more clear when I do the, um, the, the exercise. So then uh, there's a way, and, uh, and then first what we will do is uh, we will create the revision, and then uh, we will use the uh, policy, and basically policy is the way you can put the behavior in your um, API, on API management. So then let's create a new revision here, like on, uh, as we see here on the, uh, on the exercise. So then there's an official documentation, and this is a, a, a really good one because sometimes uh, it's confuse people confuse you know like version and revisions and then uh 
here's a very uh, you know uh, clear information about uh, what are the difference. So all the documentation is very uh, well detailed. So then you can use its uh, uh, reference as well. So then uh, when oops, I'm here. So then <coughs> sorry. One second. So uh, I will go to my API management service on Azure portal. So in this case, I'm not going directly to the uh, Azure function uh, itself. So then I'm going to the API. I will check my API, like product API is the only one I have here. And as you can see, we are seeing here on the top left, like the revision one. And then when I click here on this drop uh, down, I just have a one revision created uh, today, uh, 10, 57 a.m. for me here in uh, Miami. And then uh, what I will do, it's oops, this one. So then I will click on revision. So then I have one revision and because I just, I need one revision. And this revision is the, the current revision. Uh, we will see uh, there's an option to have a, a revision as a current and then uh, an option to be not current and I can choose if it will be online or not. So then I can uh, have like, uh, okay, just uh, for four hours, I will test this revision for my, uh, my developers. So basically when I click on add revision, so I will put here the revision name. So I will put this product API revision uh, two. And then I will click on create. So then now, as you can see, we have uh, uh, the current version. And then I have uh, the my created uh, revision. Uh, as you can see, the URL is a kind of different. So then uh, when the client application uh, calls the uh, API management uh, and the product uh, API, so it will must have this rev uh, rev equals two so then uh, it will route automatically to to this one uh, if it's not using the rev equals two so then go to the current so it means uh, your client application will not be impacted uh, by the by the new revisions okay so then I can uh, click here and choose you know like make current or create version from this revision. So then create version. So I will have two different versions of the same APIs based on this uh, uh, revision. I can take it off uh, offline or delete or whatever. So, but now uh, as, as I have uh, the product uh, API review, so then I will go back to the product API here and then I will choose from the here in design. So then I can choose now between revision one or revision two. So I would like to test revision two. So then when I click it here, so then basically I'm on revision two. It's important to notice this uh, 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 information on the uh, top left uh, here. And then I can go back here and then I can go to the get products again. And then I can send how many uh, requests I, uh, I want to, to send it. So then now uh, what we are going to do is the next step. So uh, I, we will apply uh, and test the rate limit policy. So what is the main idea here of this policy? It's to set for this uh, revision number two, uh, a rate limit to three calls uh, in every, uh, for a, a period of uh, 15 seconds. So only three calls uh, for, uh, Every three, three, uh, every 15 minutes, three calls. So then we have uh, here some more information about the throttling. So there's a really nice uh, tutorial how to implement this uh, policy as well. So it's pretty uh, simple. And then I can use the subscription ID if I want for one specific user or not. And I can do some, uh, you know, like a data transformation. So then I can change the, the header, for example, and send uh, or redirect to a, a different URL if the number of uh, requests are uh, achieved. So then I can test it in the throttling and etc. So let's do this uh, here on the, on the portal. But basically the main idea here is uh, uh, we go to this uh, to the operation so I can apply the policies to each uh, operation or to all operations. So at a API level itself. So basically what I can uh, do oops, here, it's uh, to my product API. 
in design here, all operations. So as you can see, we have this flow, this flow. Uh, and then uh, I have the front end is the uh, entry point of my API management. So I have the inbound process. In this case, uh, the revision two, I would like to uh, set to uh, just three uh, requests every uh, 15 seconds. So then when I, oops, not this one, screen back there. Okay. So I have this uh, button here, the add policy. So there's a few uh, uh, policies uh, pre-configured. In this specific case, I'm not using the rate limit by key because it's not supported on the consumption plan, uh, but I will use the rate limit, uh, just rate limit. So then, but I can filter by IP, I can create some mock responses, for example, oh, I need uh, to uh, expose the API to my developers and then need to, you know, to check just the uh, 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 200. Uh, then my other developers are creating the API itself. So it's really nice to mock your uh, <clears throat> application, set headers, set cores, enable or not. So, but in this case, uh, we go here and I can edit this, um, this uh, policy uh, here. So then uh, I will add the, uh, this policy here. So I will add it. Oh, let just remember real quick. It's after base. So then I come here and add it here. So then I set the uh, rate limit calls to three every 15 seconds. So I save it. It will take like 30 seconds. Okay. Oh, uh, and then now if I'm going back to revision one, and then I get uh, like the get product. I can call it or test it like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So how many requests? So then when I change it to uh, revision two to test it, so then I go to the same uh, operation, but in a revision two, uh, I will call one, two, three, too many requests. So then it will apply that policy, the rate limit to uh, three calls a maximum uh, every uh, uh, 15 seconds. So then I, the client's application, we will receive this uh, status code uh, 429 with the rate limits exceeded, try again in 14 seconds. So then if I try again, and then after the third, uh, it will uh, block again. So too many requests. So then I can set this to my, uh, to my policies, then my uh, products or on operation level or product level. And then again, I can see the, uh, the, the, the traffic between the, the caller and the, and the uh, server application. And then the, uh, what it, was the uh, message error, okay? So this is very nice. And then I can, after that, I can go to the revision and I can, uh, Code come to revision here, and then I can uh, make this one as a current. So, for example, if I click this to make this a current, so then I will uh, post uh, this change uh, on my log uh, for this API, and this will be shown on the developer portal uh, as well. Okay, so moving forward because we are uh, running. Uh, a little bit late. So then uh, we can test. There's a really nice um, uh, API management uh, Visual Studio Code uh, extension if you want to use it to write your policies on uh, Visual, Studio, uh, Visual Studio Code. So then you can uh, write your uh, um, uh, API uh, policies uh, on uh, Visual Studio Code and then publish from there. So it's pretty, really nice with code complete and etc. Uh, some resources, so browse the available policies. So basically we have uh, 45 policies now. I have probably 45 as I remember. So then those are, you know, like all the, 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 the policies we have. I, if I want to use caching or cross domain policies or transformation policies, for example, my client is sending a request using a REST or JSON uh, request, but my uh, API behind or the backend API, it's a legacy API using XML or using WSDL, 
SOP. Uh, it will transform JSON to uh, XML, and then the outbound will transform XML to JSON to my client. So then I can start to work on uh, modernizing some uh, uh, applications I have uh, nowadays. So, okay. And then uh, next step is the uh, monitoring. So basically, uh, we are using application insights with API management. So there is an explanation, what is uh, Azure uh, Monitor, what are the steps, basically. Uh, what <coughs> Uh, sorry, uh, I can see some uh, information about the um, uh, application insights uh, information to get all the requests for the last one minute, five minutes, an hour, 30 days, or whatever I want to, to check there. So then I can uh, go uh, to my API management uh, service again. So if I go to my API management here, and then I uh, found here the application insights. As I uh, attach it, when I create the, uh, the API uh, on API management, so then I can see the serverless sample here. So then there's a basic uh, dashboard, but I can have the application map. So then I can uh, see uh, <clears throat> what uh, color is calling the API itself. So then this is the, the back end. So then when I click on this, um, this application uh, specifically, for example, so top failing requests. So then uh, it's calling the product uh, number two. As we will remember, I did this a uh, few times. So then two times getting a, an error. Uh, then I can see uh, here uh, which kind of error, what are the... <clears throat> The response I, I, I get uh, there, uh, rate limit exceeded. So then I can uh, have the, this query and understand how uh, are the traffic on uh, my um, my uh, uh, application itself. I mean, my solution itself. Uh, looking to this, uh, to the to the application man or application insights uh, map. So then I can see. Uh, not just this, but I can uh, see from my uh, backend application itself. So then it will generate in here. So, okay, I would like to see the, the backend specifically. So then I can investigate the performance here. So then I can see other uh, counters. So it's very well detailed. Okay. So I can see by uh, operations, which operation I call it. So I, I call the uh, get products and then get products by ID. What are the average uh, duration? How many uh, requests and etc. Okay, um, then uh, let's go back here uh, after uh, that. So then I can uh, use the query uh, to see the top uh, failed requests, for example. It's a quite simple because I have uh, here these, oops. Let me go back uh, here. Insights, which is not refreshing. Okay. So I can see some uh, information about the uh, the like a get subscription key. What are the operation name? What time my uh, event uh, is initiated by? who I can get the uh, JSON to understand better uh, which uh, resources were, uh, was called. So then I can uh, create some queries on, uh, <clears throat> on top of uh, this here using these logs. So let me, oh, it's not started. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, okay, I didn't start it yet. Okay, we need to start it uh, before. So anyway, so then I can, uh, as you can see here, I have uh, this, um, log uh, on my application uh, insights. And then I can use uh, some queries like a KSQL, uh, and then to see our oh, requests where success equals false, summary, uh, top 10, and re uh, handler, and bar shot. So there's a few uh, options you can see there. So then you can uh, monitor your uh, APIs there. So basically, it's the same. We add the uh, rate limit, and then I can uh, check by the rate limit as well. And then uh, for the last uh, exercise, uh, basically, uh, we will use the uh, API version. Uh, and the uh, next step, basically, is uh, 
I can uh, go back to my API management here on APIs. And then if I want to, oops, what happened? So I want to uh, create a new version of this uh, product API. So then it's basically, I will, can uh, click here, then I can add a version. Then I put the name here as like a product API V2 using the path uh, as a schema, could be header or query, uh, query string. Uh, in this case, it would be V2. So then the usage will be products slash we choose slash the uh, operation. And then here I can uh, choose the uh, products. This specific version of the My API will, uh, will uh, provide. OK, oops. OK, and then now I have the, the V2. And then uh, I can route or uh, my client application can call the uh, V2 uh, version of my API. And then, for example, I can go to the get products and change the uh, operation or change the backend uh, uh, policy here as well. OK, so uh, this is it. So basically, uh, we finish this uh, uh, real quick. Uh, it's really nice to ramp up your uh, team uh, with uh, API management and uh, serverless in general. Let's give you like uh, two minutes. And uh, if someone has a question, uh, you can uh, paste the question here on the chat. And I will answer the, quest the, the, the questions. Or if you need uh, more information, you can send me an email. on this uh, address here. Any questions, thoughts? So I will paste the last uh, uh, information here. It's about my GitHub repo. You can go there. There's a lot of few things there for serverless, for um, uh, a repo, different repos. So then you can uh, see uh, a project I been working for, I don't know, like two and a half years. So then this one here, it's the uh, Azure uh, API Management DevOps uh, resource kit. It's the main idea is to how to extract the APIs from one instance and deploy in a, a different run, for example, from uh, development uh, <coughs> environment to a production environment. So I will paste uh, both on the, on the chat here. Uh, we have faced code start using Azure Functions with HTTP. So there's a few ways. I will not go into in details because uh, the uh, API, uh, sorry, uh, Azure Functions team is working uh, a lot on this uh, on this one. But basically, they uh, create uh, one um, keep warming. Uh, for the uh, HTTP triggers. So then the performance or the uh, cold start, it's now like a warm start. It's like, I don't know, eight times more, uh, eight times faster than the, 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 the previous version. But this was implemented like a year, year and a half ago. So this one, and this one is for the, let me paste the official one on the Azure. Uh, URL here. This is a open source uh, project as well. So feel free to you know uh, open issues, uh, <clears throat> add some requests. So uh, the community is contributing a lot. So then uh, let me paste this this last one here. So thank you everyone. If you don't have any more uh, questions, thank you everyone for your time. Sorry for uh, the beginning uh, with the resolution uh, thing here. I hope uh, you can uh, use this uh, repo. Let me paste it again. And then uh, you get my, uh, my contact there. So then this is the, oops, not this one. I'll paste again this serverless API. Oh, I hate this. for your records.
Okay, everyone. Thank you. Uh, hope you see you soon, and hope you get enjoying the uh, this presentation and the workshop. And uh, feedbacks always uh, welcome. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye bye.